I want to thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video. What's up, everyone? It's Be The Installer. I've returned from CES with all kinds of good information. We saw so many cool new things. We saw transparent OLED TV from LG. We saw some really cool innovations from TCL and Hisense, some really large TVs, 115 inch. We got more 98 inch TVs, 110 inch from Hisense. And then we also saw some cool things from Samsung, such as their new matte finish OLED display, which is going to be interesting to talk about, as well as some new mini LED stuff from Sony. So a lot of things to talk about. And the real question is, should you wait for all that technology in 2024, or should you just buy a TV now if you're going to buy one anyway? So we're going to go over all the different brands. And if you're interested in buying any of the products, of course, look in the links in the description below, because I'll have them all down there. All the TVs I'm going to recommend are down there. You guys can check it out. Out. And I want to start it off with Samsung because that matte finish OLED display was something that I thought was really unique. I've never seen a company take their top TV, which will be their top QD OLED for 2024, and put that sort of matte finish on it. I kind of got to see the behind the scenes on why they did this. A lot of people like the Samsung frame. So it's like, why would you not put that matte finish on a top product if in the daytime or with reflections, it actually helps and makes it so that you don't see those reflections. But in the dark, it's the same as a regular OLED. So there's really no downside. So should you wait for that? Should you wait for something like that? So when thinking about that, I'm going to go to Best Buy's uh, top deal section here. Of course, we know that they have a lot of sales going on for the upcoming Super Bowl and just TVs in general, products. There's a lot of things going on. So go into the top deals on Best Buy.com. And the first thing that I want to show you is their current lineup from Samsung of OLED TVs. And for me, one thing that a lot of people talked about in 2023 was this S90C or the fact that there's two really good QD OLEDs from Samsung. This 77-inch version being $22.99 is really good price point. And so for me, if I'm looking at 2024 and I'm saying, you know, they're going to have a 77 inch version, it's going to be high end, it's going to have this matte finish. I already know some people are not going to like that. Maybe a lot of people will, which I think it's going to be awesome and I'll have it in the house. But we already know that this S90C is a fantastic price at $22.99 for a 77 inch. And if you go down to 65 inch, it's only $15.99. Now, still very expensive for a TV. Um, and I, you know, not everyone is going to be able to buy this or want to buy this. But I just think it's going to be tough for Samsung to come out early swinging with a really low priced QD OLED, right, like this. So I would say that this is one of the TVs I would say, I don't think it's going to be a significant difference for the second tier down of the S90C or S90D as it would be this year. Uh, they did have a couple different models. They're going to have various models, you know, that are going to have some feature changes. Um, the S90D looked similar to this. They have the s 85D, which had a really cool looking design, but I think that that's going to have less speakers. We're not sure if it's going to be QD OLED or regular OLED. And then, you know, down the line. So if you're talking about high performance QD OLED, this S90C is one that checks all those boxes. And if you go up to the S95C, you're still looking at a pretty good price point difference. This is $3,500 versus $2,300. So, you know, you're going to pay another $1,300 just to get one uh, upgrade on it where you're going to have a little bit thinner TV. You're going to have the One Connect box, which I love. I think the One Connect box is a really good idea. And of course, it's a little bit brighter for sure. So, you know, you're going to jump up a pretty good price point here. So buying the S90C is something that I would probably do, but maybe the S95C, the price point is not down where I'd say you have to buy this right now. If you're interested in buying the Samsung frame, I do think that it's going to be a carryover. They're, they're not doing a ton of new stuff to the Samsung frame that I really learned at CES. I do know that they're adding a bunch of cool new speakers. So now you can get a thinner sound bar that looks more in line with kind of the nice look of the Samsung frame. And they have picture frames that you can put on the side that are actually speakers as well and a smaller sub. So there's a way to get really good good sound added to the Samsung frame where there wasn't before. And you can actually use the actual frame, the sound bar, and all the speakers to make a really good sound system. So that might be something you want to wait for. But price point wise, I mean, you know, 75 inch for $2,000, there's some really good QLED TVs that are in this price point. They don't look as good as art on the wall. 
But it's always hard for me to just say like, you know, pound for pound, this is totally worth it for the TV aspect. But if you take into consideration the art mode and, you know, maybe having a significant other that doesn't want a TV in the house, but would take art. And so you kill two birds with one stone. I think that these become pretty good value. And then probably the biggest advance that I thought of for the 8K was that the processor is supposed to be much stronger this year than it has in years past. So there's this whole debate whether or not there's 8K content or if we're just gonna be using 1080 or 4K content upscaled but Samsung is trying to address this in both manners, trying to you know push for more content to be created in 8K, but also make it so that 8K looks better by having a stronger processor. This is supposed to be able to work eight times as fast as last year's model. So um, you know if you're looking at getting an 8K model, the QN900C is the top dog of them all here, 65 inch for 3000 bucks. You can get a lot of TVs for $3,000 in this size of 65 inch. So it's rather expensive. And then it's like, well, would you rather get the you know QD OLED, maybe an LG OLED with MLA, a Sony OLED, which is probably more expensive than this actually, or go for the 8K Samsung. Now, I really like their soundbars, so if you can pair that 8K Samsung with this Q-Series 11.1.4 channel sound system for $1499, that's a pretty powerful system, and I would recommend that. They work beautifully together, and so that's a really good deal. Uh, but if not, I would probably wait for the 2024 8K models just because of that processing difference. And someone commented that I didn't talk enough about the 4K QLEDs from Samsung, and it was probably true. You know, it's hard to see everything at CES, but uh, I do think that's one of those areas where we're kind of reaching our limits for Samsung. I'm not saying that they're not good. Samsung QLEDs, great. But I think they're starting to think about kind of lowering costs on them more so than every year having just massive improvements on these QLEDs, probably because the Neo QLEDs are so good already. So I'm not sure how much better they're gonna be, if they're gonna be cutting costs, if they're gonna be improving, I'll have to wait and see. Probably should have done a little bit better job of seeing some of the improvements. But you know, for last year's QLEDs, you're talking about 65 inch QN90C here, 15.99. That's half the price of that 8K model that I just talked about. So. I don't think that that 8K model is twice as good as this one. So I'd say that that's a pretty good opportunity to get a Samsung if you're a Samsung person. I don't always go down the list, Q60C. At this point, I'm thinking, you know, TCL Hisense, what do they have to offer? Let's look at that in a second. Um, but yeah, they always have some good QLED TVs. Uh, don't discount them. Uh, Samsung always brings it, but a lot of people complain, no Dolby Vision, could that be a problem? Are we reaching the peak for QLEDs in general? Do I want a 8K QLED if I'm gonna buy a new TV? All these are good questions, but I still think it's worth mentioning. Now, another brand that I'm really excited for in 2024 is TCL. And majority of why I'm super excited is obviously the 98 inch TVs that we saw over at CES. And not just 98 inch, but also 115 inch. QD mini LED TV. Now this is supposed to be the biggest QD mini LED TV on the planet. Other people have made some videos about this. I'm excited for it in 2024. We'll definitely have it in the house to see if it's worth it because it's hard to see how good it is in a controlled environment, but it looks pretty awesome at CES. But something that really stuck out to me is that they're gonna have a whole lineup of the S5 class series TV. So they have this 98 inch that I've been talking about and raving all year. The reason that I like it is because it's a huge TV that's direct lit, that doesn't have terrible contrast, and yet it has fantastic highlights. We had it in the house and I was just so surprised at how good it was. And at that time, I bought it at 3,000 and it was 4,000 originally, so now, at 1999, I can't tell you enough that if you're looking for a 98 inch TV, go for this. It's very good. Definitely recommend it as a buy now, don't wait. But if you're looking for a smaller size of this, the problem is they don't have it. And so in 2024, they're going to have the S5 all the way down to 55 inch. Because if you look here, this is a 75 inch, this is the S4. And that is actually a 60 hertz panel. So you can't get the same quality as this S5, which is a 120 hertz panel and has all the gaming specs and all that. So same thing here, if you go to a 55 inch Q5, 299, great price point, 60 hertz panel. So if you're trying to game high speeds, not gonna work. I still think all these are great TVs. That, you know, If you're gonna get the Q5 or even the Q6 or the S4, you'll probably be happy with the price point for how good the TV is and not everybody needs a 120 hertz panel. 
but I'm just really excited for them to extend the 98 inch S5 that I like all the way down to 55 inch this year. We also had the QM8 last year, which is still sitting here at $6,000. And the new QM8 is actually gonna be improved over this model. So it will actually have 5,000 dimming zones and be 5,000 plus nits, which this was not. So that will definitely be improved. It has their Pro processor, which is their second highest processor. And then they're also gonna have a 98 inch and below in the QM7. So it's now gonna not be the Q7, which is just QLED 7 series. It'll be mini LED 7 series. So I think the Q7 or the QM7, sorry, will be more like this QM8 that we had last year. Now that's gonna have 1500 plus dimming zones and be 2400 nits, which is still, I think, better than the specs on the QM8 of this 2023 year. So two really good mini LED TVs in that 98 all the way down size for 2024. And then I think they'll have a fourth 98 inch TV too, which I can't remember exactly what it's called. But my point is you can either wait for the, you know, the really high end TCL uh, 98 inch, or you can buy that S5 that I already recommend. And then lastly, they do have that 115 inch that's gonna be crazy awesome. I mean, it's got the ultra processor, so the highest level processor, which will have to be really good to control the 20,000 plus dimming zones. And then again, that's gonna, I think, be 5,000 plus nits. So you're gonna have a 115 inch TV that's gonna be top tier, awesome, Obviously it may be more expensive. So again, you'll have to determine if you're gonna wait for 115 or just get a 98 inch. That's gonna be a tough call. I probably would just say, if you're gonna go that big and you're not gonna consider a UST projector or whatever, then just wait for that 115 inch. But if 98 inch, which is already super big for most people, is good enough for you as far as the size, then the S5's really good and I would just go for that as of now. Now LG had their transparent OLED, which is really cool technology. I don't know if that's gonna be in the budget for anyone. I have no idea what the cost will be. 77 inch transparent OLED. You'd think it had to be at least 10 grand, maybe 15. I don't know if they'll have it for everyone to purchase this year or not, but it was really cool. But we did see more realistic TVs and, and their upgrades. And one was the G4. So the LG G3 big seller, 77 inch and below had the MLA technology, which improved brightness more so uh, than it can without. So the 83 inch did not get that last year. However, this year, the G4 will have that in the 83 inch all the way down. So the 97 in the M4 and the G4 will not, but the 83 inch is a lot of what people asked. Will the 83 inch have the same stuff? And it's not just the same MLA, but it's an improved version of the MLA technology. Uh, various names for this, whether it be Brightness Boost Max, MLA, or Meta, whatever. But the point is, is that they've improved this this year, made the curvature of those micro lens even better to push that light out to the audience and not get it lost back into the panel or misdirected. So the M4 and the G4 will have that MLA technology. Of course, the M4 has the wireless box and it also now has eARC uh, to sound bars that are LG. So it's kind of confusing if you're in that super high end market, you can figure out more about that M4 technology of being able to have the wireless box over there and then still get eARC sound from the TV to the sound bar of LG without connections. So that's pretty cool for the M4. But I think the G4 is where most people are thinking. And to have that 83 inch version, it's gonna be awesome. And then in addition, the G4 of the smaller sizes will have a pedestal instead of having the wall mount. So if you're getting a 55 or 65, at least in the US, there's a good chance you're gonna put it on a stand as opposed to put it on the wall. So now it'll come with that stand. But that brings us back to whether or not you should just buy the G3 or buy the G4. So if you're looking at the larger size, the 83, I might say wait, because this is still five grand for an 83 inch, and this does not even have the MLA. And so the brightness is not gonna be the same as the 77, 55, and the 65. But if you move down to the 77 inch version of this, it's 3,400, 3,500 actually. Um, it was discounted a little bit more even, but I get this is into that spot where it's a really high quality premium TV, but that's not a really great price point yet. I mean, it's still all right, and it's still a great TV. So. I could say buy it or wait, it's probably a 50-50 proposition. If you're looking for one of the best TVs in the world, it's still a better price point than the Sony A95L, and they're both very similar in how good they are. So uh, I definitely think this is a TV that I, I actually have this. So I have the G3 and I love it, and I haven't looked back, so definitely uh, recommend it. Now, as far as the C3 versus C4 goes, 
I don't necessarily see a huge upgrade this year in the C4. I think year over year, it's kind of downplayed in that it'll have newer web OS that's going to be usable for the next five years. And it's going to have a little bit more brightness and a little bit better this and that and the other thing. And each year it seems to be that, you know, uh, anyone that has the C2 or C3 likes it more than the C10 because uh, it's newer and it's better and you're going to get upgrades. But, you know, this is a really good price point for OLED TVs at, at, at this time of year. You're talking Super Bowl. You're talking, uh, you know, I need a TV now. I'm not going to wait for six months or a year. You know, you're in a good spot because the LG C3, $15.99, that's actually the exact same price for a 65 inch as the Samsung S90C here. So, you know, this is just one or the other. Do you like Samsung better because this is a little brighter, you know, a little bit more colorful, but doesn't have Dolby Vision? Or are you going to go with the, the, this, this LG here that has a little less brightness, but is better at upscaling and has Dolby Vision and, and both fantastic gaming TV. So I can't recommend these uh, OLEDs enough. Uh, even if you go down to like a 48 inch version of this, it's 999. So you're under a thousand bucks for this. And even if you go 42 inch, 899. So I have people ask me all the time, should I go for one of these? And I'm like, I like it. I also had a friend ask me about this A2. Uh, if it's 60 hertz panel, if you're just talking about playing your typical games and using this as a monitor slash TV, 599 to get into the OLED game for 48 inch. Fantastic opportunity. And since the 83 in the C4 won't have MLA either, $37.99 for an 83 inch. I mean, it's better than the $5,000 of the G3. Uh, so definitely a better price point. Again, I don't know if this next year will be that remarkable that you'll be like, oh, the 83 inch C4 is so much better. I should have waited. It should be very similar, maybe a little bit better, maybe a little different stand. Uh, so that's something you have to think about. But overall, I'm a big fan of the OLEDs from LG. They do have a new QNED coming out, the QNED 85 again. But then I get into this thing where I'm not sure that that's a better deal than some of the Hisense or TCL TVs that I talk about. So I'm gonna skip talking about it for now, but you know we'll see more as 2024 comes for that QNED 85. Speaking of Hisense, now I did get an opportunity to go to Hisense. We actually saw some NBA basketball players, pretty awesome. Did run into Linus at Linus Tech Tip who was checking out the UX 110 inch TV, which I think will be fantastic. But their main TVs look to be, you know, minor improvements over their 2023 lineup, which was fantastic, I'll have to admit. They had three mini LEDs, the U8, the U7, the U6 last year, and it looks like they're gonna have similar this year. So they're all gonna be improved a little bit. They're gonna have 144 Hertz panels. They're all gonna be a little brighter, a little, you know, a few more dimming zones. Great opportunity to get a low price TV from Hisense. And the one carryover from last year will be the 100 inch U8 mini LED. LED. So as you can see from the Best Buy, it's still not available. So availability has been the hardest thing with this 100 inch. So if this is available in your area, whether it's three or $4,000, I would say it's really good. I saw it at CES. It's, cool. it's a good looking TV. I hadn't had it in my house yet, but I know Hisense quality. I know the eight series. This is a hundred inch. Very happy with it for this price point. It would be Difficult for me to tell you whether I would get this one or get the S5. This one has mini LED and dimming zones and all that, so the contrast will definitely be better on this. But I was very happy with the brightness level of the TCL. The lack of dimming zones can come in handy if you don't care too much about the contrast, but you want like nice peak highlights. I thought the S5 from TCL was awesome, but this is something that I would definitely consider. And then I did have the U8K this last year, the 75 inch which I thought was one of the best LED TVs on the planet. And it's only $12.99 for a 75 inch, which tells me if I'm looking at this or I'm looking at a 75 inch Samsung for twice this cost, I'm gonna go with the Hisense 75 inch because they're both very good. I like the Google TV of this Hisense. It's mini LED, it's the top of the line for Hisense. And this is the ADS panel one that I had, which people liked more so than the VA panel if you get the 65 or the 85 or the 55. So this just seems like a really good opportunity at the 77 inch for me. And if you go down to the U7 or U6, then I start to wonder if going back to the TCL is a better opportunity because uh, the price points on these were a little bit lower. And this is a 65 inch Q7 699. But if you go to the 65 inch U7 of Hisense, it's actually a little bit less. So these prices always kind of bounce around. Now, this one is a mini LED, 
where the other one from TCL is not mini LED for last year. So if you're looking pound for pound, it kind of looks like the U8K and the U7K might be a little bit better deals for you right now if you're looking high sense or TCL. And I, I made a whole video about high sense TCL or not. I think these are great values. 99% of people that are gonna buy a TV should consider these brands because the quality has risen so much while the price point has remained low. So it's not like you should just say, I'm only gonna buy a Sony or a Samsung or an LG. I would never consider these brands. That's just silly because these brands are fantastic for the price point. So I would highly recommend you check out some of these TCL and Hisense and links in the description while you're looking for your new TV. But the one TV that I'm super excited to have in the house this year from Hisense is obviously the 110 inch UX which is just gonna be crazy. So it's supposed to be, again, 20,000 dimming zones, and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like five or 10,000 nits of brightness, I can't remember, I think it's 5,000 for sure. But you're talking again about a giant, beautifully bright TV with mini LED and all the fixings, you know, it's gonna be awesome. So it'll be really interesting to see if this UX at 110 is better than the 115 of ECL. There'll be a battle there, I'm sure, for, you know, biggest, baddest TV and also the availability in 2024. Which one will be available in the US? Are the price points gonna make it even remotely possible for someone like you and I to buy this? Uh, who knows? But we know that they have a 100 inch TV from Hisense that's fantastic already for 4,000. And we know that TCL has a 98 inch uh, S5 at 2,000 right now. So really, if you're not looking to spend 10 or 20 grand on a TV, why would you not just buy one of these two that I'm showing you, you know what I mean? And then lastly, we went to Sony. And again, they haven't released any new TVs for 2024. They did give us a look behind the scenes at their new backlight system in mini LED TVs. And I don't think that they'd show us this new backlight system if it wasn't coming out in 2024 TV. So the X95L was something that people loved and it's in the 85 inch version only. Uh, and if you had to get a 75 or 65 or even the mainstream 85 was actually a X93L. And I don't think there was a significant difference there. I think that they're really good. Like I, I like them. I thought it was one of the best looking TVs. I did the 85 inch X95L at a guy's house and I was like, dang, that looks really good. But seeing the new technology and the way that they're able to even work the dimming zones better, like have them lit variably and have them move so quickly with regards to the processing power and all that. I mean, I can't explain it as well as the people from Sony did. They're pretty smart. But the point is, I'm pretty excited for mini LED in 2024 and I think Sony is as well. So where does that put us with their TV products that are currently out? I mean, right now, 65 inch X93 mini LED, which is probably the most mainstream or the top tier one you're going to get, $15.99. Again, this is the same cost that you can get the OLED from Samsung or from LG, right? So you could get either one of their middle tier OLEDs or second to best OLEDs. So if you're in a really bright room, this might make more sense though, because it can get much brighter full screen. Uh, it does have the Google TV operating system, which I love over the other two operating system, WebOS or Tizen. But the next question for me is, do you want to go with something like this or do you want to just go with an OLED TV from Sony? Now, theirs is $100 more than the other two OLEDs we were talking about. But with that comes a really good process TV. It really is great for upscaling. Again, I like the operating system, the Google OS. I learned from my good friend Brian at Brian's Tech Therapy that this A80L has a very similar body structure to the A90J that I had a couple years ago. So that's actually good to know. It has a heat sink. It's a really good TV. It's probably brighter than the Master Series OLED that I have from two years ago. So $16.99 for a really good Sony OLED is a great opportunity. So that's something you should think about. Uh, both of those are really good. And I think either one of those is probably worth buying right now, knowing that Sony won't even release their new TV lineup until maybe March or April. And then some of the models don't even come out until summer. So if you got six months to wait, then wait. But if you're looking to buy a TV now, I would say these are good opportunities. And of course, if you're looking for a big Sony, you have to look at the X90L. Uh, this is a 65 inch model, which is only 1099. So you're around a thousand bucks for a 65 inch. I think the actual 55 inch is right at a thousand. So yes, that is a pretty good price point. Uh, again, I showed you TCL and Hisense that were less expensive than this though. So very difficult to choose. But when people are looking for a TV at Best Buy around Super Bowl, this 85 inch X90 series is always something that I see getting loaded into trucks, okay? 2000 bucks, 
for an 85 inch Sony that has great processing, great tone mapping. It's anti-reflective capabilities are okay if your room has light controllability, if you're able to bring the shades down, plenty bright, looks really good. And again, Google operating system, love it. But if you're gonna ask me if I would buy this or if I would buy the 98 inch TCL S5 for 2000, if I had $2,000 to spend and my wall could handle it, I would probably go with this because I just like this a lot. And sometimes these TVs like this Sony that have the local dimming, sometimes that just bothers me more than actually how good the contrast is in this TV. That's probably the minority of people. I don't think I'm in the majority. I think a lot of people would say 85 inch Sony, I'll take that over a 98 inch TCL. But I'm saying it's not as easy of a choice as you might think it would be. And I had the video on this that I really liked it. So, you know, you could go either way with that. But more or less what I'm saying is Sony TVs aren't always discounted that dramatically. If you're looking high end or if you're looking for like this top A95L OLED from Sony, the QD OLED, you're not getting a great deal on it. You're, you're gonna get a great TV. I have that in my bedroom. It's absolutely fantastic, but it's not cheap. And so you have to make a decision. Are you gonna buy something that's expensive now? Are you gonna buy a great processing TV like this X90L now for a discount, huge TV, good price? Or are you gonna take your chances waiting for 2024, see what the Sony lineup looks like, make a decision because their mini LED uh, you know, backlight system is gonna be even better this year, more dimming zones, more control. I think that's gonna be true, but time will tell if it's worth waiting for at this point in the game, to be honest. So those are all the TVs that I have to talk about today. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, decisions that need to be made, or what things you're interested in hearing about for 2024. And also, if you're gonna be buying from Best Buy, click on the links in the description below. Also consider becoming a member uh, of Best Buy's membership program. They give you two year warranties on almost all the products and you get 60 day return period, which is much better than the 14 days. So consider that. Links are in the description below. And if you're still having a hard time deciding what TV to get, check out the Be The Installer quiz on BeTheInstaller.com. That will run you through some questions that you can answer and kind of direct you toward what I think are the best TVs for you to buy right now. And of course, smash the like button. It really helps us get this video out to more people and we'll see you guys in the next video.